millions of coverage of the Starship 5 launch in just a few short hours, we'll all become witnesses to a truly unique event. The launch of Starship 5. Starship has been a rapid, iterative process, with SpaceX embracing a test, fail, fix, repeat philosophy. This approach, while sometimes spectacularly explosive, has allowed for rapid progress and real-world validation of design choices. The first high-altitude test, SN8, took place in December 2020. This was a 12.5 kilometers hop that tested several critical systems, the body flaps, the transition from main tanks to header tanks, and the landing flip maneuver. Despite ending in a fiery landing due to low pressure in the header tank, it provided crucial data on the vehicle's aerodynamics and control systems. The sight of the massive rocket performing its belly flop maneuver as it descended was unlike anything seen before in rocketry. SN9 followed in February 2021, reaching a similar altitude, but also ending in a crash landing. This test helped refine the landing flip maneuver and highlighted the importance of engine reliability. The dramatic explosion upon impact underscored the high-stakes nature of these tests and the challenges of landing such a large vehicle. SN10, launched in March 2021, achieved the first soft landing of a Starship prototype. For a brief moment, it seemed like complete success had been achieved. However, the vehicle exploded a few minutes after touchdown due to a methane leak, underscoring the challenges of the new propulsion system and the complexities of managing cryogenic fuels. SN11, also in March 2021, encountered problems during its descent and was lost before landing. This test provided valuable data on the vehicle's behavior in foggy, low visibility conditions, an important consideration for a vehicle designed to operate in various atmospheric conditions on Earth and potentially other planets. The N15 test in May 2021 marked a significant milestone, achieving the first successful high-altitude flight and landing. This prototype incorporated several improvements based on data from previous flights, demonstrating the effectiveness of SpaceX's iterative design process. The successful landing of SN15 was a pivotal moment, proving that the unique belly flop maneuver and last second flip to vertical orientation could work reliably. These early tests paved the way for the full stack tests we've seen recently. The first orbital launch attempt came in April 2023. While it didn't reach orbit, this test was crucial in validating the full Starship stack's performance during launch. The Super Heavy booster performed well during the initial ascent, but the stack encountered problems during stage separation. Despite ending in a dramatic explosion, this test provided invaluable data on the behavior of the full Starship system. The second test in November 2023 saw significant improvements. Both stages separated successfully, and the flight duration was extended. The upper stage reached a higher altitude than before, though it still fell short of orbital velocity. This test also demonstrated improved control during the hypersonic phase of flight, a critical capability for eventual missions beyond Earth orbit. The third test in March 2024 achieved partial success. Both stages performed well during ascent and separation. The booster executed a controlled descent 
but was lost just before its planned water landing. The upper stage reached its intended altitude and demonstrated some on-orbit maneuvering capabilities before re-entering the atmosphere. However, it broke apart during the final phases of re-entry, highlighting the challenges of the heat shield design. This test was particularly important in validating Starship's ability to perform orbital insertion burns and maneuver in space. This brings us to the fourth test launch in July 2024, which was a game changer. During this mission, Starship not only achieved clean stage separation, but also demonstrated controlled re-entry of both stages. The upper stage reached its intended altitude and performed a series of on-orbit maneuvers, showcasing its ability to deploy payloads and simulate refueling in space. This was a critical demonstration for future missions to the Moon and Mars, where on-orbit refueling will be essential. The booster, during the fourth test, didn't attempt a landing on the launch tower. Instead, it performed a soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico. This controlled descent was a crucial step towards today's ambitious catching attempt. The successful water landing proved that the massive booster could be precisely controlled during its return to Earth, setting the stage for the even more challenging tower catch we hope to see today. Now, let's talk about one of the most exciting aspects of today's launch, the Mechazilla system. This innovative catch mechanism, located at the launch tower, is designed to catch the super heavy booster as it descends. Using massive arms nicknamed chopsticks, Mechazilla aims to grab the booster mid-air, potentially eliminating the need for landing legs and enabling rapid turnaround for future launches. The Mechazilla system consists of several key components. The launch tower itself, standing at approximately 469 feet tall. This tower is not just a catching mechanism, but also serves as the launch mount and provides all the necessary connections for fueling and power. The chopstick arms, which can move vertically along the tower. These massive steel structures are designed to support the weight of the Super Heavy Booster and precisely control its movement during the catching process. A catcher mechanism at the top of the tower to stabilize the upper stage of Starship. This component could potentially be used to stack Starship on top of the booster, further streamlining the launch process. A system of cables and pulleys to control the precise movements of these components. This system needs to be incredibly robust and precise, capable of handling the enormous forces involved in catching a rocket booster. Advanced sensors and control systems to track the descending booster and coordinate the catch in real time. This involves complex algorithms to predict the booster's trajectory and adjust the chopstick's position accordingly. The catching process is expected to work as follows. As the Super Heavy booster descends, it will use its grid fins to maneuver into position. The grid fins, which look like massive waffle irons attached to the upper part of the booster, provide aerodynamic control during the descent. The booster will then fire its engines to slow its descent and hover briefly. At this point, the chopstick arms will then close around the booster, catching it by the hard points near its top. These hard points are reinforced sections of the booster, specifically designed to bear the load during this catching maneuver. Once caught, the booster can be lowered onto the launch mount, refueled, and prepared for another launch. This system, if successful, could dramatically reduce the turnaround time between launches. Traditional rocket landings require inspections and refurbishment that can take days or weeks. With Mechazilla, SpaceX hopes to reduce this to hours, potentially allowing multiple launches of the same booster in a single day. This rapid reusability is key to SpaceX's plans for making space access more affordable and frequent. So, what can we expect from today's Starship 5 mission? Building on the successes of the previous flights, space is aiming for several key objectives, a successful liftoff and stage separation. While this has been achieved before, each launch provides more data to refine the process. The upper stage reaching its target orbit and performing
performing payload deployment simulations. This will further validate Starship's capabilities as a satellite launch vehicle and cargo transport to orbit. Testing of on-orbit refueling technology, critical for deep space missions. This involves demonstrating the ability to transfer propellant between two spacecraft in orbit, a key capability for long-duration missions to the Moon or Mars. A controlled re-entry and splashdown of the upper stage with particular focus on the performance of the heat shield during a full orbital re-entry. This will be the most rigorous test yet of Starship's thermal protection system. And most excitingly, the first attempt to catch the super heavy booster using the Mechazilla system. This will be a heart-stopping moment as the massive booster attempts to precisely position itself for the catch. If successful, this will be a major leap forward in rocket reusability and launch efficiency. It would demonstrate not only the viability of Starship as an orbital vehicle, but also showcase a completely new paradigm in rocket recovery and reuse. The implications of a successful Starship program are profound. It could dramatically reduce the cost of access to space, potentially opening up new opportunities for scientific research, space tourism, and even interplanetary colonization. The ability to launch and reuse large payloads frequently could accelerate the development of space-based solar power, large-scale orbital manufacturing, and deep space exploration. For NASA's Artemis program, which aims to return humans to the moon, Starship has been selected as the human landing system. A successful Starship could accelerate these plans, potentially leading to a sustained human presence on the moon sooner than previously thought possible. The large payload capacity of Starship could allow for the transport of habitats, supplies, and equipment needed for long-term lunar exploration and eventual settlement. Looking even further, Starship is central to SpaceX's ambitions for Mars colonization. Its large payload capacity and potential for on-orbit refueling make it uniquely suited for long-duration interplanetary missions. A fleet of starships could transport not just astronauts, but all the equipment and supplies needed to establish a permanent human presence on the Red Planet. As we wrap up, I want to remind you all that the future of space exploration is unfolding before our very eyes. Each starship test brings us one step closer to a multi-planetary future. Whether it's establishing a base on the moon, sending the first humans to Mars, or launching satellites that will connect the world like never before, Starship is at the forefront of this new space age. The journey of Starship embodies the spirit of innovation and perseverance that has always driven human exploration. From the first tentative steps beyond our atmosphere to today's ambitious tests, we've come so far in our quest to reach the stars. And yet, in many ways, we're still at the beginning of this incredible journey. Today's test is more than just a rocket launch. It's a glimpse into a future where space travel could become as common as air travel is today. It's a step towards a world where humans are no longer bound to a single planet, where the resources and knowledge gained from space exploration could help solve some of our most pressing problems on Earth. So, don't miss out on this historic moment. Stay tuned for our live coverage of the Starship 5 test launch, coming up in just a few hours. The countdown to the future starts now, and you're all part of this incredible adventure. Together, we're witnessing the dawn of a new era in space exploration. Let's watch history unfold. The future of space exploration is about to take another giant leap. Are you ready to witness history?